N gauge has moved on a huge distance since I first looked at it. The level of detail on these, you could be forgiven for thinking that this was a much larger scale. A big hello to you. Welcome back to the channel. I hope I found you well. I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you up here to the loft on Weir Yard. And today, We've got a bit of a small review, and I don't mean about the length of time it takes to watch this video, but rather the diminutive subjects that we're going to be taking a look at. Now, I get asked an awful lot about whether I'm going to review anything N-Gage, and I know a good few of you are avid N-Gage modelers. So today, and thanks to the generous donations from the Patreons, I've been able to pick up a couple of the new N-Gage Special Commission wagons that have been commissioned by Rails of Sheffield from a company called Matheson. And these really did catch my eye, not least because the quality of the finish of the liveries did look incredibly sharp. In fact, when I first saw them, I had to double take because I actually thought that they were double O, and they seemed like the perfect starting point to take a good look at what's on offer in N-Gage. The range of wagons includes liveries suitable for all across the UK, but the two that caught my eye and that I've purchased for today's review were the Abercrave and Gurnos ones. Now, the reason for this is that the Swansea Valley has a lot of childhood memories, not least because a good portion of my family came from that area, and so an awful lot of my distant relatives actually worked in some of these collieries too. So it seemed like the perfect choice to dip my toe in the water of N-Gage. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Support also comes from TMC, the Model Centre. Check out their comprehensive and fully stocked website at themodelcentre.com. For project ideas, why not look at their airbrush offers at the link in the description and have a go at creating your own weathering and graffiti masterpieces. It couldn't be simpler. So without further ado, let's take a good close look at these particularly small wagons. Engage! <laughs> I'd like to start off this video by owning up to one little fact in railway modelling, and that is I've never really been into N-Gage. I don't do 2mm scale modelling. And part of the reason for this is because, firstly, when I started modelling, uh, the N-Gage stuff available was notorious for being rather crude, had the pizza cutter wheels, and really was just underwhelming. The other thing is that as I get older, like so many people, my eyesight is not as good as it used to be. So I really would struggle with something this small. I mean, I have to say that even 009 is a little bit tricky even just to get on the rails for me. But with the generous donations of the Patreons, and I know an awful lot of you guys are Engage modelers, I thought it was about time that we reviewed something from this more diminutive scale here on the channel. And uh, what better opportunity than these Matheson N-Gage wagons that have been released exclusively through Rails of Sheffield. And we do have a link down below in the description box to take you to the full range. Now, when I first spotted these, I have to say, I saw the pictures and saw the liveries and a part of me just thought, oh, double O-Gage wagons must have some of that. But actually, the pictures were of uh, an N-Gage wagon, well, a whole host of them. And uh, these two in particular, the liveries, are quite meaningful for me. Abercrave and Gurnos uh, down in the Swansea Valley. So uh, these come in um, some really quite small boxes. And just to put into context, here is a Backman double O-Gage wagon which um, kind of dwarfs the box and the uh, wagon within. 
But I've got here ROS, a triple zero one. This is Abercrave. These are limited edition of 200 Fort Rails of Sheffield. And uh, let's get this opened up. And uh, a little tip for you. If, um, like me, you do cover the boxes, if you want to open these without damaging the box, there's a way of doing it with, uh, I'm using just a handle of a pair of tweezers, but a steel ruler on larger scale boxes. Uh, you can uh, just get these open without straining or ripping any of the flaps. The interior on these, uh, we've got uh, a kind of plastic interior. And there's a hard plastic lid over the top and then really easy to just get the, the wagon out. These really are tiny, I have to say. I'm just not used to N-Gage. Um, I mean, it must be said, I have helped out a friend in the past uh, with their N-Gage exhibition layout. And I just find these things so, so tiny. Uh, but I'll get them both out of the box. So this is the other one. I've got ROS 0005, the Gurness Swansea wagon. Again, limited edition of 200 for Rails of Sheffield. And they are exclusively available via uh, the Sheffield-based retailer. And I believe that these are a... Um, a further run of wagons under this brand. Uh, the previous ones did all sell out. Um, so I've seen a few people talking about these online and they've got some very favorable reviews. And it's one of the reasons that I thought that uh, with the aid of the generous uh, patrons to the channel, that it was well worth picking up a pair of these. Now, one of the things I mentioned before uh, that really actually threw me when I saw the pictures of these, I immediately just assumed that they would double O. And the reason for this is you can see there the wealth of detail, the crisp printing on these. And uh, in a, an enlarged photograph, you might be forgiven for thinking that these were a much larger scale. And really, I should have looked at the couplings uh, they do have these very distinctive couplings in N-Gage. Uh, they are the standard couplings for N-Gage. Um, but these do fit into uh, the kind of a, a socket in there. And you can get replacement couplings. And one of the things that I want to do is to run these on my 009 layout. Um, and certainly, I think that these will look... Um, um, interesting with the uh, small-scale 009 locomotives and rolling stock. It's, it's the only way that I'm going to be able to run them. Now, my baptism on N-Gage was probably about 20 years ago. I did look into the scale when I got back into modelling, and one of the things for me was that the wagons were quite crude, the printing was very simplistic, and the wheels were often dubbed pizza cutters because of the huge flanges, overscale wheels with no detail whatsoever. It was, it was very simply a case of one pattern of wheel fitted every single item of rolling stock. But these, when I first took a look at them out of the box, it struck me that the wheels on these are actually superb for the size. Um, a little bit difficult to show you just past those W irons, but we've got uh, fully spoked wheels. We've got much more scale thickness flanges. And you can see there as well that the brake blocks do line up with the wheel treads, um, which I would have assumed that they would just mold these to as part of the underframe, but actually there's a lot of separately applied detail. Uh, and so much so that uh, the, the level of detail on these, if I took my hands out of the way, you could be forgiven for thinking that this was a much larger scale. We've even got that printing of the wagon builder's details on the uh, sole bar of the wagon. And I'll be honest with you, I've got every faith that we'll probably be able to read some of that detail under very close magnification. Another point of note is that these door bangers, they're basically a sprung piece of metal that on the real wagon, when the doors were uh, opened, it would allow them to swing down and they wouldn't just crash into the underframe, doing damage both to the door 
and the brake rigging, they'd actually spring off that spring and it would just help protect things. But that is actually a metal piece. Uh, and it's little bits of detail like that, which is really quite superb. Uh, the brake lever as well, that feels, I could be wrong, no, that's, no, that is plastic, but that is quite robust. And they are separately fitted pieces, so they do look incredible when you consider the size of this. I mean, it's, it's barely bigger than the end of my thumb, and yet we've got an incredible level of detail. We've also got the interior planking, um, even on the sides, although there's no representation of the uh, doors, either on the end door or the side doors. But then again, we don't often get that anyway on double O gauge wagons. Now I'm going to bring back in this. And if you're interested, I did pick a Welsh wagon on purpose. Um, this is from the same valley. And that is pronounced Ustlavera just in case you were <laughs> just uh, taking a running jump up and thinking, my word, how on earth is that pronounced? That is Uslavera. Um, and even on these inside, um, you can see that we don't get much in the way of internal detail. We do get a bit more. There are bottom doors on this, but it, this is a much bigger wagon. On these, the planked floor is probably the most important. That is all there. The colour chosen for the interior does feel right to me. That It doesn't look out of place. It doesn't look odd. Uh, certainly uh, some weathering will really bring out the detail on this. We don't have sprung buffers. Wouldn't really expect it. But look at the buffer heads themselves there. They are quite robust. They're difficult to tell with my eyesight whether they're separate pieces or actually part of the underframe moulding but certainly if you can't tell that's normally a good sign they do look really really nice the tipping end door again we've got all that strapping detail on there perfectly realized and then the other end of the wagon the non-tipping end we've got the planking the metal strapping the actual livery application there, Abercrave, finest big vein collieries, number 331. And actually, if you ever do go to Abercrave, it's nothing like its industrial past now. There are no mines, but uh, do stop in at the Abercrave Inn because they've got an amazing bar with um, the largest choice of different whiskies that I've ever seen. So uh, they are a bit of advice for free there if you're ever in the area. The rest of the printing, again, I can just about read that. I'm just looking on the viewfinder. Empty to something quarry, NVR Railway. Now, you'll be able to see this much more clearly because we're going to take some really, really high-res zoomed-in pictures. But that is really crisp. I don't see any blurring. The drop shadow on the Abercrave is done really, really well. There doesn't appear to be any real bleed through of the red underneath through the white, which can sometimes be a little bit of a problem with red wagons. Now, I'm going to move over to the Gurnos one. And uh, again, we've got a similar red. I think we're looking at the same shade of red. Absolutely. Yes, we are. But this again, Drop shadowing on the Gurnos is slightly um, more subtle, but it's definitely there, nice and clear. We've got all the same detail. Uh, it's, a, it's pretty much the same base wagon, but again, it's a really good livery application. All the detail is there. And this underframe detail really is superb. The wheels themselves are incredibly free running. And certainly when we've had this running, I've had to run it on my 009 layout. So just uh, as a warning on that, of course, the 009 track is code 80. You can run uh, N-Gage on code 80, also code 55. But these uh, flanges really are superb. And it ran perfectly happily around Munnath Tatis although looking a little bit out of scale with the locomotives. Uh, but nonetheless, I had no problems whatsoever with their running. So I turn now to the score. First up is build quality. 
And for something this small, it's really remarkably well put together. Now, I kind of secret shop at these. I just rang up, ordered a pair, and got them sent out, paid for these using the generous donations from the Patreons. So there was no special treatment with these, and they really have stood up well. There's nothing come off, not even any of this really quite delicate metal door bangers or the brake rigging. Everything is exactly where it should be. It's well fitted. Nothing is loose. Nothing is uh, untoward on these. So really, nothing I can fault, and that gives us a 10 out of 10. When it comes to running quality, they managed pretty well. There's a reasonable weight to them, even for something this small, although uh, a little bit of a, a load, perhaps with hidden ballast in, wouldn't go amiss. They did rattle a little bit through the frogs on the points, but they are 009 points, so um, it is something that I guess the uh, flanges and the clearances on those not really quite set up for N-gauge. But overall, they ran pretty well, uh, although I did replace the couplings for magnetic West Hill Wagon Works ones, purely for my convenience more than anything else, because I have no other N-gauge coupled locomotives, and it just made them fit in with the stock I already have quite well. So I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. On DCC fitting and innovation, well, DCC fitting isn't applicable, but on innovation, I really do like the brake rigging underneath, the spoked wheels, and overall, the printing finish is really, really good. So again, not really a huge amount to fault. Uh, certainly, it did feel that it was pushing the boundaries of uh, the accuracy of things that could be made this small, but um, it's certainly the case that N-Gage has moved on a huge distance since I first looked at it around 20 or more years ago. So I'm going to give this an 8.5. On accuracy and quality of finish, again, the quality of finish really is superb. Accuracy, well, I don't have any photos to go off with the real ones, and it does feel that these are on a fairly standard base wagon. There are a number of different liveries available from Rails of Sheffield, which do all appear to be the same base wagon, but with different geographically accurate uh, companies on. So whether you model from the southern area, through Yorkshire, passing through Wales, and even on up into Scotland, they've got liveries that are perfect for those areas. And of course, back in the 20s and 30s, these wagons might have been seen a little bit far afield because different grades of coal were used for different things. So it's not unusual to have seen Welsh wagons working their way all over the country with the finest of steam coal, or indeed anthracite, very high quality, was much prized in a number of industries, and certainly you would have seen it carried about the country in wagons such as these. So I'm going to give this a 9.5. On value for money, the price tag on these is £19.95, so just a shade under the £20 mark. But it does feel that you get an exceptionally high quality wagon for that money. And really, no disappointment at all at that. And it's one of the peculiarities that certainly when you get down to this level of small, the price does go up relative to what you get simply because that is just so fiddly to make all of the uh, tooling to be able to make those W irons, the brake rigging, everything and assemble it. And they really have done an amazing job on this. So I'm going to give this a 9.8 out of 10. It's certainly light years ahead of the N-gauge wagons that I've seen previously, and it really does actually turn my head and make me think that N-gauge is very much a viable scale, and certainly does rival Double O for the detail that we're seeing. And that gives us an overall score of 46.8 out of 50, an incredibly respectable score for what is actually a superb miniature masterpiece. When it comes to these special limited edition wagons, 
through Matheson's and Rails of Sheffield, I can wholeheartedly recommend what I see. If you're an N-gauge modeler, these are an absolute must for the periods of the 1920s, 1930s, and certainly you won't be disappointed with what I have found here today. So I'd like to thank the Patreon viewers who made this review possible, and don't forget that you can always leave a suggestion of the sort of thing that you want to see reviewed in future videos. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Do leave a comment if you're an N-Gage modeler and perhaps you've already got some of these wagons. What do you think of them? Or is this something that actually you really like to look at and maybe this is what's going to turn you on to this smaller scale where you can actually get a huge amount in a small area. So the perfect scale for those modelers who are starved of space. And uh, I'd also like any suggestions you might have for future review topics. Uh, do leave them down there in the comments. And uh, also you can head on over to the Facebook group where it's a, a great place to hang out with other like-minded modelers and uh, share some pictures and updates on your own modeling builds and see what other people are up to. Don't forget that every single Monday night from seven o'clock UK time, we have the Monday Club and it'd be great to have your company for two hours every Monday. Although, of course, you can always watch it on catch up. We've still got the Monday Club Special Commission wagon available, albeit in double O, but this is the KR Models Pal Brick in William Loud and Sons livery. They're still available to order and you can order with confidence through Rails of Sheffield at the link down below. Please like, share and subscribe. And until next time, happy modelling, take care and I'll see you then. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Support also comes from TMC, the Model Centre. Check out their comprehensive and fully stocked website at themodelcentre.com. For project ideas, why not look at their airbrush offers at the link in the description and have a go at creating your own weathering and graffiti masterpieces. It couldn't be simpler. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, and Jennifer Garrett, thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.